Well, hello guys and gals. I wanted to talk to you today about the fact that aquaponics build soil. And I almost ruined my opportunity to do that. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of uh, lamb's quarter, amaranth, and other, let's say, weedy species uh, that are not looking so healthy. And that's because this morning I started doing some cleanup work in the aviary. I'm pruning out a bunch of lamb's quarters out of my wicking beds. I let them grow and you can see, well, let's go talk about this first. Terrestrial soil being built inside a container. So ignore the compost thermometer, it's just there so I don't lose it. Um, you can see it looks like a bunch of little baby amaranth and it is because, or not, I'm sorry, uh, lamb's quarter because I cut out all the big lamb's quarter and it's like a carpet now and that uh, pepper's growing there. There's some uh, nasturtium and uh, wasabi radish and other peppers all through here. You can see my nasturtium's coming up. And all I'm doing is going through and cutting back any of the grasses, radishes, weeds, etc., that have grown up in these beds. I have a way that I can actually kill all the weeds in these beds. I just didn't do it this year. And it's, it's beneficial because what I'm going to do is take that over there and feed all that high protein uh, lamb's quarter to my chickens and my ducks, which they love. So now the problem's a solution. But in this aviary, there's been a lot of lamb's quarter and amaranth and sunflower growth. You can see there's some sunflower growing. There's some lamb's quarter there. There's uh, less amaranth, but it's around. Now, amaranth grows... Um, in very depleted environments. So this has actually gotten so fertile in here that things that are more likely to grow in a fertile si system, like lamb's quarter, are secessing and taking over for the amaranth. You can see we got cucumber here, got some ground nut coming up in here again. So that's what's going on here. And I'm just cleaning this up and I'm starting to take a lot of this stuff out because it's gotten to a point now where it's actually interfering with my vegetables and tubers that I want to grow. So it's time to either chop and drop, spread and shed, shred, call it what you want, or in some cases, take some of it out and use it as feed for my animals. So since I was in here doing this anyway today and I saw all this stuff coming up in this bed, I started yanking it out. Now, how does this prove that aquaponics builds its own fertility and soil? Well, look down there. That's the return line and the delivery line for the ebb and flow to the seven flow bed. You notice it's all in pieces. And the reason it's in pieces is last late November, right after Thanksgiving, I shut this down for the year and I just left this little goldfish pond here inside the aviary uh, run on its own system, which is basically just an overflow into this tank. Some goldfish in here, goldfish down there, just doing its thing, growing minnows and goldfish. And so this has not run at all since about a week after Thanksgiving. It has not had a drop of water or nutrient provided to it by the system. It just sits here. We're also in a very, very dry year. Let me show you what I mean by very dry. This is good soil in here. See this? See how dusty this is? All right? Try, because I haven't watered it here. I don't really want a bunch of stuff growing on the ground in here. It's growing anyway because it's so fertile, it's so rich, and it's so deep compared to right over there. And yet, look, amaranth, I don't know what that weed is, and lamb's quarter. And let's take a look at this little lamb's quarter here. See that? Soil. Now, lamb's quarter and amaranth both can handle a lot drier conditions than a lot of other um, weedy plants. However, I'm, I'm just going to show you that. Is that soil? I think that's soil. Where did that come from? How in the world, if this system, and I'm not saying you can throw a tomato in there and let it go through summer, and it's going to grow in there without any nutrient additions, any water. Uh, this will run out, of course. It hasn't run for almost six months. But I'm telling you, I wish there was smell -o vision when I cook, and I wish there was smell -o vision when I talk about soil. This is some of the prettiest humatic soil I've ever seen in my life. Look at it. You're lucky if you get something like that when you buy premium soil in a bag. You're not going to get that. Let's pull this little amaranth out here and, and see if it'll bring the soil with it. No, it just popped out clean. Look at the root structure, though. Now, no water. Bone dry year. Again, bone dry year. We have these plants growing in little pockets of soil. And this is wet. This is damp. It's about an inch deep. I'm sorry, it's 12 inches deep is the depth of this bed. It's about two inches with the top, so it's 10 inches of lava rock and leka. 
That's what this is. That's what I put in here. That's all that I put in here. Look here. Look at this. Look at this. You tell me what that is. See, when people tell you something like aquaponics is growing in a soilless system, they're ignoring soil creation. Look at this. Tell me you don't want the soil in your garden to look like this. Now, how'd it get there? It's a combination of fish waste, dissolved solids, condensing into this system that acts like a giant biofilter. And it's a combination of the roots of the plants that grew in the prior season. And if they're not causing a problem, I don't remove them. This is why not brand new big giant aquatic systems like the one over there, like that one there is like 4,500, 5,000 gallons of water without overstocking it to make an aquaponics system out of it, letting it be a pond system with an aquaponics element like this. The first year you put that in, it will not grow, especially nutrient, heavy nutrient requiring vegetation for you. It might grow some lettuce or something, but it's not gonna grow peppers and tomatoes and cucumbers. But th three or four years in, it will. And your only challenge is to make sure you don't get too much of this and clog the bed. With the type of ebb and flow that I run on a timer that I've talked about before, it's not a problem. But you, you're going to tell me that aquaponics is soilless? I'm going to tell you, you don't know aquaponics. You have no idea what you're talking about if you're going to tell me that. And if you're going to tell me you can tell the difference in an aquaponic-grown vegetable from a soil-grown vegetable because they taste different or they have a different consistency or whatever, you're full of shit. And that's why you're full of shit right there. So when somebody tells you aquaponics is inferior in some way or it's not a soil building system, right there. Denial of freaking reality, folks. And you can learn all about this and more this summer. I'll be releasing the, the best aquatics course that's ever been re released. Not an aquaponics course. Just This is just one element in what we do here. But again, you tell me you don't want that soil in your garden. Catch you later, guys.